Today, tips, tricks, and settings for photographing motion and action, autofocusing with the Nikon Z6, Z7, Z62, and Z72 mirrorless cameras. Happy holidays, everybody. It's Hudson. Uh, this is going to be a autofocus extravaganza focused on Nikon's Z cameras. So this is this is one that people have been asking me for. I'm going to go into a bunch of detail. I'm going to lay out a chaptered time code. So if you scroll along the bottom of the scroll bar, you'll see different parts of this video that you can watch or rewatch whenever you want to, along with a, a chaptered out table of contents in the video's description. And as always, product links and links to other videos like my Nikon Z62 and Z72 setup video, my original Z6 and Z7 setup video, where I go through step by step and show you how to customize controls to take advantage of their autofocus systems. You know, and, and this video is really going to be geared towards those folks, I think, who've been switching from DSLR to mirrorless and realizing, you know, either they get frustrated because they're trying to, to use the old auto, uh, optical autofocus system techniques and they're not translating well to the Z cameras and I think there's some tricks I can show you of some new even more sophisticated a little more nuanced a little more powerful uh, automatic area autofocus adjustments and subject tracking uh, adjustments that you can make in your autofocus technique that, that gonna kind of blow you away the more you use them with these cameras so I'll take you on a trip through Ridgefield National Wildlife Refuge, photographing wildlife. I'll talk about settings, showing you the back of my camera while I'm talking about how to set it up and what the controls look like. I'm also gonna go through a series of images that I've shot with the Nikon Z62 over the past month or so uh, that just showcase you know, the autofocus capability as well as how I used autofocus to get those shots. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, before I jump in, I wanna talk to everybody and invite you all to our first office hours of 2021. I think it's on January 5th. It's a Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. We're going to talk about long exposure, and we'll do a general Q&A. Any questions off topic, but if you have long exposure questions, I'm going to talk about long exposure technique and examples, and, and I've got a bunch of training materials coming on long exposure, so this is a good time to ask those questions. And you can also drop a question when you're signing up, either for Zoom or YouTube Live. So once again, that's hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. We've got an awesome group of people meeting up these free office hours to just talk photography and get together creatively, so I hope you'll, hope you'll join us for the first one of 2021. And I hope that 2021 is a year to make up for what we've all had uh, going on in 2020. I think we all deserve it. Okay, everybody, so I'm gonna start off by going through, uh, letting you look through my camera while I photograph a bit at Ridgefield National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, and just to give you kind of, the, set, the, set the tone, I was in my, my Sprinter van, El Jefe, that I take on workshops. Uh, and I had my wife and my three-year-old girl and my four-year-old boy uh, switching out being on my lap steering as we drove really slowly through the wildlife refuge and pointing out birds and wildlife. And this, this whole little shoot was in uh, the course of just a couple of hours in, in this beautiful wildlife refuge in so, so, uh, southwestern Washington, really close to Portland, Ridgefield National Wildlife Refuge with uh, my wife running the, uh, the field recorder, the, the Atomus Ninja 5, to record my screen while I work. So I hope you enjoy. So I think the mode that most DSLR photographers, Nikon photographers in particular, start with is dynamic area autofocus. You know, that's the most familiar, sort of like DSLR-like, optical autofocus-like. You gotta position that square, lock your subject in, it'll pass it to the surrounding points. But that's kind of a legacy mode for the, uh, for the mirrorless, particularly for the Z cameras. I feel like it's a legacy mode People are used to it, so they gave it to you, but it's kind of low tech. You gotta keep that target, right, in your subject. I think the magic happens when you go into the auto area, autofocus modes, animal eye detect, human eye detect, or just straight up. And the camera, it kind of acts like close subject priority, but it also recognizes common subjects, and it'll pick that subject, particularly if it's big in your frame, it'll just lock in and say, well, that's what they're photographing. It's not that little blade of grass in the foreground, it's that big buck eating that grass. And so the camera will make really good decisions for you. Now, 
if you have eye detect on, now and then it'll, you know, if the eyes are big enough in the frame, like a portrait subject, it'll just lock in the eyes and you'll find every single shot's dialed in. You know, here it's looking at the scene and saying, well, that looks more like a bird is probably the subject. Not that there's a big bird in there, there's a juvenile eagle. Uh, but if for some reason, you know, say the bird turns its head and the camera starts trying to autofocus on, on tree branches instead of the bird, then you can always grab your subject tracking mode. You wire that to a button. I like to wire it to the function buttons on the front of the camera for, 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 um, for action and wildlife. And then you can just activate that little yellow box. And when you hit the autofocus button and hold it down, it locks on the subject. And no more do you have to keep that chosen point over your subject that tracking box that you've now activated by holding down the AF on button is suddenly going to follow your subject around all over the scene. It's basically sensor based. It's the new technology at work. So I like to, you know, in a scene like this, the blackbird is the closest thing. The camera's going to have no problem picking out that that's my subject. Here, the cattail looks like it might be the closest thing. The bird's small in the frame. It's having a hard time picking that bird out. So activate subject tracking, lock it on your bird. If you let your thumb off the AF on button, you can put it back on where it's more over that red wing in the head. And basically you can keep moving the camera around as long as you hold down the AF on button, you're gonna keep that locked. You let off the AF on button, then you can recon reconfigure it and reacquire. You can touch the button that you have set for AF tracking and turn it back off. It's definitely the high tech way to work with the Z cameras. Let the camera make the decision, override it with subject tracking when you need to. And you'll find you don't need to very often. All right, so you saw a little bit of that autofocus stuff in action uh, in, in my Ridgefield Wildlife Refuge shoot from, from the other week. I want to run in and just talk about the settings in the camera and record my, my camera's screen while I talk to you about this. So I've got, I'm going to talk about the Z62, Z72 first. I'm using my brand new Z72. Uh, and then I'll talk to you about the original Z6 and Z7 and just how they're a little bit different as far as autofocus controls go. They, they act very much the same, although the Z6 II and the Z7 II are faster and maybe a little bit better at tracking, but the controls are theoretically the same. It's just a little bit different menu structure. So, you know, he, here I am with my Z7 II. If I jump into the I menu, either through the touch screen or through the I menu button, I've got my autofocus controls right here. And in still mode, you've got AFS, that single servo where it locks autofocus. AFC, autofocus continuous, where it continues tracking, and that's what we're focused on, or manual focus. So I'm here in AFC. And then if I jump in to the auto, to the different area modes, you got that dynamic that we talked about, where it's really just that kind of pattern of you know, it's kind of the old school legacy mode. You want to focus on something, you have to put it right over it and kind of hold it over there. And it'll hand off autofocus points, but it mainly you got to kind of keep your tracking point over your subject. That's that old school legacy mode. If we want to go in to the auto area modes, you've got just auto area. That's not looking for any eyes at all. You got auto area, autofocus people, where it's looking for people's faces and eyes. And then you've got autofocus area animals where it's looking for animals eyes and faces so in the wildlife refuge we're focused on animals and if an animal comes into the scene when you're in that mode it's going to automatically lock on that face or that eye if you choose to override it you can go ahead and just touch the screen to put a subject tracking box up I like to program subject tracking to my, to my function two button on the front of the camera so I can activate and deactivate that square. It's not actually gonna track your subject unless you hold the autofocus button down. But then once it's held down, it's gonna lock that subject in and it'll move around the frame with you as you move. This is with my big 14 to 24 uh, at about 15 millimeters. So we've got some area to move around here with its big lens cap, its filter lens cap on the table. If I want to deactivate that, I can just hit my subject, my function two button or the minus button on the back of the camera. Um, you know, and, and I've talked about how I set up that function two button in my Z62, Z72 setup video. I'll link that in the video description. Um, if you want to have a narrower field where, where it's looking for faces and eyes. Say you're photographing people and you want to have the, the face and eye 
in a more limited part of the frame. You can do human eye detect and face detect or animal face and eye detect in a wide area mode with the new Z62 and Z72. This is something that isn't in the original, but now wherever you position this box in the frame, it's gonna be looking for eyes and faces only right there, only in that square. So if you have a group of people and you really wanna focus on one person or one part of the group of people, or if there's a whole series of animals in your frame and you really only wanna focus on that one over on the right kind of upper third of the frame, you put your box there and it's only going to be looking for faces and eyes inside that box. That's kind of a neat limiting feature. However, when you use this, you don't get the subject tracking override. So you miss out on that. All right. Um, so let's talk quickly about how these modes work in the original Z6 and Z7 really fast. All right. So here I am with my, my Z7, my original Z7. So this one, you know, it's a little slower moving your autofocus point around in the frame. It's just a little slower at tracking. It doesn't have that dual processor that the new camera has. It also has a slightly different autofocus menu set. So you still have AFS, AFC, manual focus down there for your autofocus mode. But when it comes to the, to the modes, you don't have that wide area animal eye detect or that wide area human eye detect. And you only have auto area autofocus. So you turn that on and it's gonna be you know, exactly the same deal where you know, it's gonna automatically focus on things that it thinks you want in the frame unless you hit subject tracking. You can just tap the screen. And it's gonna look for eyes and faces, animals and people, but to get that to happen, you need to jump into your menu. And you know, I put this in my my menu, I put um, up near the top of my my menu, I put A4, auto area, autofocus face and eye detection. That way I can flip between animal and human. Face and eye detection on, animal detection, face and eye, or you could turn it off. I usually just leave face and eye detection on and if I'm doing wildlife, I'll switch it to wildlife. But it's a menu option in the custom settings menu. You know, if you wanna look for that in your custom settings menu, it's A4, but I would just advise you to throw that into your My Menu so that you can access it in the Z6 and Z7. It's not quite as handy as the new camera. That's just one of the little kind of usability improvements that's come with the, number, with the two models, the upgraded models. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's yet another reason why my Z7 is probably going to be up for auction here pretty quick. All right, really quick before I wrap up this discussion on autofocus, I want to talk about some of the special modes that are available for shooting video. And, you know, it's true that a true professional video shooter is almost always going to be manually focusing. They don't want to take the chance that the camera makes some poor choice in the autofocus decision. But I will say that the autofocus for these Nikon cameras has gotten really, really amazing with its mode for video. And I, I use it all the time. When I, when I do these videos, I have auto area, autofocus on my Z6 with face and eye detect, and it just tracks my eye even with a shallow depth of field lens like the 51.8 that I'm shooting this video with. And, and the way that I do that is through a different mode. So, you know, let's say we're in stills mode. It's going to remember all the settings that I was at. I was in manual mode up in stills mode and da, 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 you know, auto ISO. If I flip into video mode, it remembers my settings as well. I did not have automatic ISO turned on. I've got it locked down so exposure doesn't change. I have a 50th of a second shutter speed for the 50% rule, you know, for those of you that are into filmmaking. Um, that's a whole nother topic, but there's also an autofocus mode that's different. It's this AFF. So instead of just AFS for still subjects and landscapes and such and autofocus continuous for moving subjects where it tracks and manual focus, you've got full time autofocus. And under that full time autofocus, you have all the same choices that you would have for autofocus continuous. So pinpoint wide area for, you know, large for people, for animals, auto area for people, for animals. Right now I'm in auto area for people. If a face pops up, it'll start tracking. That's how I'm filming this video right now. But it knows right now it's making the decision that this lens cap for the big 14 to 24 lens, the, the 2.8 with filters that I've got sitting on my desktop right now, that's my subject. That's where it thinks I want to keep thing in focus and it's constantly focusing. I don't have to hold down the AF on button. That's the difference. If I want to add a subject tracking lock, like I can just touch the screen or use the same controls I would in my still and wherever I go in the frame, 
going to keep my subject that I turned the AF tracking on locked in place. So that's a really cool mode for shooting video. And let's say you have a small animal moving out there on the landscape. You can just touch the screen, lock in the auto area mode, and just, you know, you're using your say your, uh, your fluid head and tracking it as it moves through the scene. As long as it stays in the frame, you're gonna stay locked on it. When you wanna cancel that, you can hit the minus button on the back of the camera, or as I sit, like to do the function two button, and it will automatically track things like faces and eyes and you know whatever subject you think is best. It's very much the same as shooting in autofocus continuous with subject tracking. Let me jump in and I'll show you um, some, some videos that I actually shot at Ridgefield using this video mode. One of the things I've loved since I've been shooting with the Z6 is the ability to just flip into video mode by just flipping that little lever around the AF on button and then you hit the record button and it'll remember whatever settings you were using last time. So, you know, here I'm in manual mode, 50th of a second, and I can flip through the eye menu to go into crop mode and all of a sudden I'm still shooting 4K, but I'm shooting with just the center part of the sensor like a like a AF, an APS-C crop and my 500 millimeter lens suddenly becomes 750. And between the in-body five axis image stabilization and that 500 PF stabilization, it's amazing how I can handhold, just braced against the window with a four-year-old in my lap in the van and have a nice steady shot. Now, I mean, if I was going out to really shoot video, here again, we're, we're in full frame, we're in FX mode. If I was really going out to shoot video, I'd get on a fluid head and, and be super stable and be able to, to do my pans and tilts. But, uh, you know, again, here it is in, in DX mode. I'm just letting the camera make all my focusing decisions here. I'm in AFF mode, that's full-time autofocus. And that basically means you don't even have to hit the AF button. It's choosing my subject and tracking it for me. And it's doing a magnificent job. You can activate tracking in that mode, just like you can uh, in stills mode and, and it'll lock the subject until you turn it back off by hitting the OK button and it'll just follow it around the frame as long as it stays in frame. But you know, you know, here hand holding, braced in the car, 500 millimeters, the buck is close up. It's pretty amazing how steady that, that in-body image stabilization and the lens-based stabilization work together to really get you a nice steady shot. It's like magic. All right, and, and let's jump in. I'm gonna go into Lightroom and show you all some images that I've captured uh, in the time that I've had the Nikon Z6 II. I just got the Z7 II, so I barely have a few frames with it. Uh, but I'm gonna go through and show you some action and motion images and what it's capable of with regard to autofocus. And I'll talk through what autofocus mode and area mode I was using and why when I shot the image. All right, so I thought it'd be cool to go through some of the images that I've captured uh, with the Z cameras. Actually, I think all of these are with the Z6 II since I just got the Z7 II in my hands, but they're identical. Uh, and I'll start with the refuge photos. And I thought I'd just run through and talk about my kind of autofocus technique and, and method for each one of these images. So we'll just, we'll just jump in here. You know, when I first got to the refuge, sadly, I didn't have my, my recorder all hooked up to my camera to record this scene, but like, as we rolled in, I saw yet another Ibis, the second time in a month, spear, or not Ibis, uh, Egret, spearing this, this little field mouse, this poor little field mouse, and then take off flying, and the camera with, with auto area, uh, autofocus just just nailed it and I got this great shot of this this egret in flight with this poor skewered field mouse in its mouth and then right after I got that I was kind of marveling at it, and a hawk flew over uh, and the hawk you know it's smaller in the frame quite a distance away this is cropped a little bit and in order to lock autofocus on that I activated subject tracking you know with with the egret no need to do that. It was frame filling, big, the camera recognized the subject, bam, locked it. With this hawk at a distance, it's a small subject moving in a big wide scene. The, the subject tracking really helps. That's why I like to keep it on that function two button right under my finger, ready to activate or deactivate whenever I want. Here's that heron uh, that you saw in the video clip and you know, just, just that one, uh, no need to use any auto area. It was really apparent to the camera what I'm focused on. You know, here's the, the red-winged blackbird in a scene where the, the camera was nailing 
uh, auto area autofocus without any of my help. But in this one, there's several birds to choose from. There's a more complicated scene. I'm gonna activate subject tracking to, to nail exactly which bird I want in focus. And just some really fun frames. I spent, I spent a good 20, 30 minutes there at the uh, Red Wing Blackbirds and, and both of my, my kiddos are like, I think it's time to go to the next spot, dad. And I'm like, but they're so cool. Um, here's that, that juvenile eagle. And you know, if, if you go back and watch that section where I talk about autofocus for this, when I activate the subject tracking, you'll see I bump up exposure about, uh, about a stop and a third, just because, you know, sometimes when you have a real dark bird like this against an overcast or blue sky, it gets so underexposed. You don't see the detail and texture in the bird. Um, and with a pure white overcast sky like this, overexposing and just letting that sky go to white would, you know, it would enable to, me to drop in a puffy blue sky background or something if you really wanted to. I don't do a ton of that, but it's much more important to me. You know, this is never going to be an award-winning shot, but I want to see the detail in the bird. That's what's important to me. This is just a raw file. I could go in and get a lot more detail out of the bird's eye and feathers. And you can see the Z6 II is just a champ at 4,500 ISO there. Now, this is no award-winning photo, and at 20,000 ISO, I've done a bit of noise reduction and lost some detail in here, but um, it did a good job autofocusing at 20,000 ISO in real low-light conditions when we saw this crazy albino nutria. I've, I've never seen an albino nutria before. Here's some of those images of that buck. Um, pretty darned amazing, just the way that the camera locks with eye detect, you know, here... Um, it just nails eyes. It's wonderful when eye detect autofocus locks in. So here's a scene where I was out shooting with my good buddy Trevor, auto area, autofocus, no subject tracking, just as he came off the ridge, you know, we kind of coordinated, where's he gonna jump? And I was watching for him coming out of the trees and I just hit AF on as he came leaping off the top and the camera locked him and I have about 20 frames of him coming down the mountain, all of them as razor sharp and in focus as this one. And just kind of no need to think, just put him in the right spot and, and, and hit, the, uh, hit the shutter in and, and, and rapid fire. This is an earlier trip out to the refuge, the same Ridgefield refuge that I shot these later photos. You know, here it could be the same buck, I don't know, but I don't know, it's a little bit bigger buck. But in this frame, you know, with all these grasses and the buck standing a ways away, not moving, I used subject tracking to lock in his face. But then when he took off moving and got more out in the open and I'm panning with him as he's running, no need for subject tracking. You turn that off and just let the camera choose and it's gonna find a subject that you're panning and tracking with with a long lens and lock it for you. Um, here again, you know, this bird is a small figure in a big scene with other grasses and things. Tough for the camera to pick it out that that's your subject. That's where you want to activate that little subject tracking box, that, that box, move it down into position over the bird, hit the AFM button, lock it. Um, this scene, really obvious to the camera what's supposed to be in focus. It's that bird with the eye standing, you know, it's, it's the closest thing, it's the biggest thing. Camera had no problem locking this. My good friend, uh, Jim Stringfellow, foil boarding on the Columbia just a couple weeks ago, wearing his dry suit, you know, big frame filling, filling action figure. This is again with my 500 millimeter lens. And you know, it, as long as you're filling the frame with your subject, the camera's gonna do a great job picking out what it is and nailing focus on it. Eye detect, so human or animal eye detect. I'm finding that the animal eye detect works really great with cats and dogs. It, it's also worked with me with seagulls and that buck out in the wildlife refuge. But with people, when you go to human eye detect autofocus and the auto area autofocus, it's just magic. I mean, it, I've had a really hard time, unless my shutter speed is too slow, getting someone's eyes out of focus in the frame with this camera. You know, you just make sure that they're in the frame and auto and eye detect is on. And if they're big enough and if their eyes are large enough in the frame, it's just gonna lock them. If they get a little smaller, it'll still lock their face. There's face detect, then eye detect. And there's a little arrow beside each eye. You can flip which eye you want in focus with your little D-pad on the back of the camera. Um, when you've got two people, you pick whose eye you want. I believe in this one, I focused on Pike's eye. Uh, and then you wanna just make sure that you, that, that you have 
everything in focus. Peppy's a little less in focus, but here I actually had her run back and stand beside her brother because I wanted them both to be in focus. I could also just ramp up the aperture, narrow it down a little bit and, uh, and, and get a little more depth of field. But I love those blurred vine maples in the background in this scene. Again, you know, the camera's gonna kind of do close subject priority and it's gonna look for large moving subjects that you're tracking and it's just magical how it picks what you want in focus. Here, Pike's jumping off this rock, I'm tracking him and the camera just knows. You know, A, he's the closest thing, B, he's big in frame filling, C, I'm moving the camera with him, it just locks him in. If you've got a couple people running towards you, it's gonna, or three in this case, my wife Stacy's walking up, Pike's running, Pepper's running in the foreground, it's gonna choose the closest person first. And you can override that. You can go into wide area, eye detect autofocus, or you can activate subject tracking and put it over Pike or put it over Stacy. Um, in a scene like this, where they both turn their heads away and I have another face in focus, it's gonna immediately flip from the close person to the face that's in focus. If you're in face and eye detect, it's gonna choose that face. I didn't have to pick Stacy's face. She's a little far away for eye detect, but it picked her face and locked focus on it. Um, she was shooting for a bit and got some beautiful images too, and I haven't even talked her through it. She's just hitting the AF on button. You know, so for example, in this scene, she's got a great eye. I haven't really talked through all the technicalities of the camera. But as I said, you know, she's got me big in frame filling. She's tracking along with me with the camera. She hit AF on. It locked me in this beautiful backlit scene with the kids running on the trail ahead of me. You know, here at the coast, the toughest thing ever, kids running at you full bore erratically, face and eye detect. It just, it just locks them. Um, here, you know, it's, it just knows I'm tracking with her. I don't, I, none of these shots that I activate subject tracking. I'll tell you if I, if I, if I do, I'll tell you when I do. But in this case, it's just phew, amazing. You know, into backlight, that's tough for the camera. I pulled a lot of shadow detail up in this image. Um, and you know, it's fast motion, obviously. She's running and jumping in the, in the water here. And it just, it just locks that subject and it, knows what you're shooting. It's just smart. You know, it's, it's a lot like when we went from center weighted metering in, in the old manual camera age to matrix metering where the camera's choosing from a library of scenes and determining what it thinks the exposure should be and how that's gotten better and better and better and better and better to where I, I really never use center weighted anymore. Now and then I use spot metering. Same thing with auto area, autofocus and subject tracking. Sometimes you override it, but most of the time it's got it nailed. I detect. Just bam, no problem. Here's a crazy one, just low light autofocus capability. So here, you know, it, it was gonna go from my friend Donnie's face and instead I, I used subject tracking. I activated the little yellow box and locked on my friend John's nose. And I had the camera in manual mode, wide open, my 50 millimeter 1.8. I'd set the shutter speed at a 30th of a second where if people aren't moving and I'm still, I can get a good fast shot particularly with the uh, in-body image stabilization. And you can see the camera went up to its max, 20,000 ISO. What a beautiful image. This is just something you couldn't get before. Or here with pepper roasting marshmallows over the fire. Like this is eye detect. It's locking on eyes at this low a lit scene. It's just, just kind of like cheating. It just feels like cheating to me. And sometimes, you know, here in the landscape, you know, typically when I'm doing landscape shots or, or, or these big wider vista scenes, I'll be on the tripod and manually focus. Here I've got a surfer walking through the frame, but everything's out there at infinity. Once again, I used my action mode. I'm in autofocus continuous, AFC. I'm in auto area autofocus. Didn't even pick a point. It just locked. And I could see, you know, that through the viewfinder, it's locking the surfer and the surf. Bam, you know, shot this little underexposed just to make sure I preserve the disc of the sun there. Boom, um, you know, and again, this scene, normally this is an HDR, and, and I let the camera in auto area autofocus just nail infinity for me. I have my little girl Pepper up on my shoulders, so I've got a three-year-old on my shoulders, and I went into bracketing mode and fired one frame on the light meter, one frame, three stops under exposed. I put it in high speed capture mode, uh, and so I could just hold down the shutter and pop, pop, take two instantaneous pictures. I kind of braced as much as you can with a three-year-old on your shoulder and just fired two frames when these two little kids running through the water were in about the right spot for me. Um, and, you know, the auto area autofocus 
nailed the scene, even in AFC mode. Now, if I had my druthers and I wasn't in a hurry, I would definitely set up on a tripod, manually focus this, zoom into 100%, make sure these rocks are all in razor sharp relief. But then I probably wouldn't have these two kids running through the scene and I actually like them in there. So, so there's a, a little review of images talking about autofocus strategies and techniques and what worked for me and what didn't work with the Z cameras. And you know, one more thing I would say that, that my DSLR friends who've been holdouts for a while that just picked up the Z62 or the Z72 have been remarking to me, and it's something I remember my first impression, one of the things that really sold me on the camera and made it hard to go back to DSLRs, is the ability to autofocus in really low light. You know, you, the, the, the signal, the light signal gets amplified and you see a brighter image through your viewfinder than you're going to in, on an optical viewfinder in low light situations. And the autofocus is really, really quite incredible in low light. I've actually found myself able in reasonably lit scenes to autofocus wide open through 10 stops of neutral density, which, I mean, that tells you something. I can focus, autofocus on planets uh, when I'm out doing the Milky Way. Um, it's just a whole new game. So in that AFS mode, pinpoint autofocus, make sure that in the autofocus settings, in the custom settings menu, you turn on low light autofocus and it's just, it's miraculous what these cameras can, can focus on in almost completely dark conditions. So hopefully that's a cool review of the autofocus, things you need to think about in a transition to a Z camera. I hear them maligned constantly that they're not great autofocusing cameras. And, and, and I find it annoying because the reality is if you take your time to learn what the system is, it's all going towards the auto area autofocus mode and the eye detect and face detect autofocus modes. And that is the future. It's sensor based, it's computational. It's the same way our cell phones are taking such amazing photos. We're starting to harness the computing power of dual processors and what the sensor's seeing in this camera to determine what it is that should be focused on. And that frees you up as a photographer to work on composition and exposure and get the scene dialed in that you want. I'm finding that since I moved to mirrorless, I'm getting far, far more images in razor sharp focus. That, that was something that happened to me in the DSLR age when the live view became so good that I could use it in the landscape to dial in and get perfect focus and check my focus foreground to back. Um, and then it's a whole nother revolution being able to do that through the diopter adjusted viewfinder. Um, just, just miraculous and cool and fun. That and how amazing all the S line optics are for the Z system. It's just kind of a renaissance time to be a photographer. I feel like the equipment for all of the camera brands are getting so good right now. It's tough to get a bad camera. All right. So, We've got the holidays happening right now. Uh, you know, I know it's a weird year, and for many of us, it, it's not safe to have big family gatherings like we might want to, but I hope that each and every one of you is getting some time with family and friends, even if it's virtual time, eating some really good food, packing on a couple extra pounds, because why not? It's the holidays. Um, you know, ha enjoying the end of this year. I'm gonna ring this year out, and I cannot wait for 2021 to be better. Um, a couple of news flashes, things that are upcoming. I'm working on putting together workshops for the latter half of 2021 and moving some workshops around and you'll be hearing more from me about that really soon. We've got some really fun stuff planned uh, when it's going to be safe to get together and go out and be creative once again and share our images and learn from one another. Um, I've got uh, some cool ATS stuff coming. I'm going to do a big extravaganza on filters, uh, comparing a whole bunch of different brands doing some detailed testing of sharpness and color trueness with different kinds of filters that'll fit on my, my favored new 14 to 24 millimeter uh, 2.8 S lens for Nikon, but also just in general, jet testing some brands against each other and seeing who's the most color fast and who's the most true. Uh, I've got some fun stuff I'm gonna talk about how I record myself in video, some, some tips for video shooting, and also some tips on audio, which I think is the hardest part of doing video. I, I've got a really cool new bit of audio kit that I think anybody who's into recording audio is gonna enjoy. Um, and I just wanna remind everybody, once again, low light office hours, January 5th, I believe it is, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 
sign up at hudsonherring.com slash office hours. Leave a question there. You can sign up for YouTube or for, uh, for Zoom. I, I love seeing people on Zoom because we can interact and you can chat and we can do the live question and I see everyone's faces. So join me. Let's ring in 2021 and let's make it an awesome year. All right, everybody. Stay creative. Stay safe.